Jayhawks, and welcome back to Good Morning KU. My name is Kennedy Kavinsky. And I'm Shamaria Massenberg. On Tuesday night, most of us were glued to our TV screens. I know I was. President Donald Trump and candidate Joe Biden participated in the first debate of the 2020 presidential election. However, the debate did not receive the praise many were expecting. The moderator had a hard time keeping both men on track, and most of the debate appeared on social media the next day. Reporter Jordan Nicole has the story. We are 34 days away from election night. The first night of the presidential debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden took place Tuesday evening. Candidates have received backlash based on the comments said at the debate. But saying uh, stand back and stand by, like you're basically saying wait on the sidelines until I give the word. When asked about alt-right groups, President Trump had this to say. You want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a White name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud boys. Proud boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. Joe Biden had this to say last night. Folks, do you have any idea what this clown's doing? Yeah, there's nothing smart about you, Joe. 47 years, you've done nothing. Well, let's have this debate. And if we'll you would have had, let me just tell you, you're the, the worst way, president voice. America has ever had. A this year, there are more than 23 million eligible Gen Z voters, which is about 16 million more than 2016. About one in five voters are of Hispanic descent, making this the most diverse generation yet. It, it feels good to be registered to vote and everything, so. I'm Jordan Nicole with KUJH Entertainment. The Kansas voter registration deadline is October 13th, and elections will be held November 7th. Many students gathered outside Strong Hall in protest of news of Breonna Taylor's perpetrators. Jayhawks peacefully demonstrated their rights and showed support for the Black Lives Matter movement. While spending some time outside, you may have noticed temperatures dropping. I know, I sure have. I mean, it's not a bad idea to grab a jacket before heading out to class, as we will see these trends continue throughout the season. For sports fans, temperatures dropping means one thing. For students searching. It's basketball season. The Kansas Jayhawks' previous season was cut short. However, the boys look to improve on their play last year and become dominant team once again. Later today, I will have the opportunity to talk to one of the coaches of the KU men's basketball team, so stay tuned. For students searching for a way to stay active in an outdoorsy way, the city of Lawrence has bike trails running in every direction, and with the new Bike Share program, we can stay in shape as we tour the sites of our beautiful city. Clinton Lake is only a short 30-minute bike ride away from Daisy Hill and has the most incredible sunset location in all of Lawrence. Walking campus may give you the KU calves, but biking can give you the KU thighs. Bike Lawrence today. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. I'm here with Coach Howard. Coach Howard, how are you? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. No problem. First, I want to say thank you for taking out the time to meet with me, especially with everything being virtual. But we have to talk about the NCAA announcing that the season will resume on November 25th. Describe that feeling as a coach and what were the reactions like from some of your players? We were really excited about, you know, um, having a tournament, having an actual date, especially ending the way it ended last year. You know, we're won 17 games in a row, you know, won every game on the road in the Big 12, which was history. So the way we finished up last year was a bitter, bittersweet, you know, not being be able to play in the NCAA tournament. So our guys have a little chip on their shoulder. They were waiting, you know, uh, all through the pandemic to, you know, what's really what's going to happen. So we never knew if we we're going to play, if we we're going to bubble up or what was going on. So for the NCAA to come out with an actual date, uh, it's pretty cool. And our guys are really excited. Definitely. This morning you texted me and said you were coming back from boot camp. Now, what does that look like with following COVID-19 guidelines? Well, uh, you know, hats off to our, you know, our athletic director and our medical staff because they've done a great job of, 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 of having, you know, uh, different seminars and different uh, ways we could be protected and protect our, our, player, play, our players and also protect ourselves. So we're practicing social distance uh, as much as we can. And we've done a good job of staying um, 
for guys, you know, staying uh, COVID free uh, so far. Uh, it's been great. We've been practicing, getting after it, but boot camp is two a days. You go in the morning, you go in the afternoon, and you still got to go to weights. You still got to go to class, but it's all mental. It's uh, it's a it's a time where our, our guys come together. Uh, it, it bonds us, bond, bond us really, really uh, every day, every minute that we sweat because you have to do it together. And um, uh, we really, really been successful and feel like that's how we separate ourselves from other programs in the country by doing boot camp. Right. That's great. Now, last season with leaders like Devon Dotson and Yudoka Azebuki, you guys were ranked number one with fans hopeful that you would take it to the final four for the first time since 2018. Do you feel like there's unfinished business and are you confident that your team can have another great season? Most definitely. It's going to be tough. Uh, I mean, that's a great question because losing uh, Doak, uh, the big fella, having one of the best big um, man in the country uh, is definitely a loss. And then you talk about Devon Dotson with his toughness and his competitive juices. Uh, but we got some guys. We want to score, uh, I think, a lot of different positions, a lot of different ways, and uh, not just relying on Doak and Dot like we did this year, but having Marcus Garrett coming back. Uh, we added some new pieces with, uh, you know, uh, Bryce Thompson, who was a McDonald's All-American, uh, Jalen Wilson, who ran shirt last year. So we got some different pieces with Ochai coming back. So we're excited. Uh, we're picked you know, uh, from, you know, five in the country to as low as number seven, which, you know, preseason doesn't matter. Uh, but we're excited about, you know, just getting a better play and uh, to, to be around our guys. It's been, it's been a blessing. Coach, we're excited too. It was wonderful having you on the show and we look forward to cheering on the Jayhawks in November. Any last comments before you go? Uh, just big shout out to you guys for having me. Uh, uh, this is pretty cool to do this. And, uh, you know, you guys keep practicing social distance and, uh, uh, let's continue to support our, you know, our, our volleyball team and our football team and all the other sports and uh, basketball just around the corner. So rock chalk. Rock chalk. Thank you. We'll be back with more news. Yeah, I always just clap in the This is where everyone's talking amongst themselves. Do you know how to do it? Do you know how to do it? Are we supposed to smile? When do we start? Somebody over here already started. Can we talk about how the piccolo part's the most complicated one? It is. <laughs> you listen, you're doing it when the band's not playing. You have to tell me when it starts. I still don't know. Here we go. has a right and a wrong way of doing it. <laughs> no, no, yeah. wrong. I like my way better. I don't know how One, to do two, the three, end. It's just, I don't sorry. know the head. <laughs> it's hard by yourself. Welcome back, I'm Shelby. And I'm Soleil. This is your Thursday Good Morning KU News Update. After the first presidential debate between President Donald Trump and Democrat nominee Joe Biden went off the rails on Tuesday evening in Cleveland, Ohio, the Presidential Debate Commission announced additional structures to be in place to assure a more orderly discussion. The second presidential debate is scheduled for October 15th in Miami, Florida. A House of Representatives vote on a $2.2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package has been delayed yet again after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin failed to agree on a final deal Wednesday night. The two are set to reconvene today in an effort to reach an agreement. A video of an Ohio woman getting tased at her son's middle school football game went viral last week. Authorities asked Alicia Kitts several times to put a mask on or leave the property. In response to this event, Governor Mike DeWine is asking all Ohio residents to respect officers who are enforcing health policies. In sports, the KU soccer team is off to a 2-0 start this season after a 1-0 victory over Texas Tech on Friday night at Rock Top Park. Junior goalkeeper Sarah Peters kept the Red Raiders out of the net and senior Catherine Castro scored a late goal to secure the victory. 
Kansas will travel to Manhattan tomorrow to play Kansas State in the Sunflower Showdown. The volleyball split a season and opening series with Baylor last week at the Horsch Family Athletic Center. After a thrilling five-set victory over the Bears on Friday, the Jayhawks looked flat on Saturday, losing in a straight set. Incomers, in Jenny Moser and Alea Ellendine led the way with combined 43 kills over both matches. KU is in Austin tonight and tomorrow for two matches with the Longhorns. And in lighter news, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes and fiance Brittany Matthews announced the future arrival of their firstborn child by taking an Instagram and posting a photo of their ultrasound. Social media has gone crazy with comments and congratulations. And that'll wrap it up for today's news update in our show. The weather forecast called for a cool down tonight with a low in the mid-30s, but it should be back up in the 70s on Saturday. Have a great day, Jayhawks.